Count your blessings instead of your woe, instead of your prosperity. Count your gains instead of your losses. Count your joys instead of your woes. Count your friends instead of your foes. Count your smiles instead of your tears. Count your courage instead of your fears. Count your full years instead of your leaves. Count your seeds instead of your means. Count your health instead of your wealth. Count on God instead of yourself.
Man, Andre, just give me a little bit more of that. Get my dancing shoes on. Give me a little of that. <laughs> oh, 
Y'all sing it out, choir. Sing it out. We lift our hands. We lift our hands. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands to give you the glory. We lift our hands to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. We lift our hands. praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, we come on this holy and high day. This is our fifth Sunday. Priscilla Hawkins, WMS, Women's Missionary Society, worship service on this May 30th, 2021. And then along with that, this also is our Memorial Day of service. Memorial Day originally called Decoration Day. It's celebrated to recognize and remember the sacrifices made in honor of our military servicemen and women. Today we remember the men and the women of the military who put their lives in danger and made the ultimate sacrifice to keep others free. So on this day, we remember them. And along with that, it's also a day upon which we remember our loved ones who have gone on to glory. So, oh God, we just lift them up. We remember them. Uh, we rejoice. And now they're on the other side of heaven. So for that, we are eternally grateful. And for a moment now, we close our eyes, bow our heads, just for a moment of prayer. As we gather here, O oh God, in the harbor of your safety, we thank thee for your fellowship and for our church family. And Father, we ask that you will strengthen us, O oh God, restore us and inspire us with your love. Lord, would you fill us with your peace so that we journey onward, Father, and we pour out our love and grace to others, especially those, Father, in hospitals and rest homes and sick rooms, oh God, and those families who are still suffering from the pandemic, the COVID-19. Oh God, we pray for those and we mourn for those who have had their loss here and there and everywhere. And oh God, we're reminded as we relax the rules, we relax the gatherings. Just be mindful that the pandemic is still going on. So be vigil, be vigil, and be careful in every place that you go and everything that you do. And God, we just ask our souls would catch the wind of your spirit, oh God, so that we take your promises to all the earth. And oh God, we just ask this in your glorious and matchless name, for you are our God and we are your people, oh God. We are the sheep of your pasture. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.
reading Psalms 118, verses 5 through 14 in the New International Version. It begins with five. When hard pressed, I cried to the Lord. He brought me into a spacious place. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortal do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All the nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord I cut them down. They surrounded me on every side, but in the name of the Lord I cut them down. They swarmed around me like bees, but they were consumed as quickly as burning thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them down. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. I know that God, my God, God is good. Oh, God, my God, God is good. You know that he brought me out of darkness. God is good. You know that he saved my soul. God is good. Every footstep, God is good. Say that He got my every footstep. We 
service for you to give back a portion of that that God has given to you. You can accomplish this in several ways. You can mail in your offering, you can drop it by the church office, or you can give online and that information is on the bottom of the screen for your convenience. Today is the fifth Sunday, which is also Women's Missionary Sunday. So we are asking that you would include a small amount of giving to our society to help with our conference assessments. We thank you in advance. Now, Lord, we ask that you would take this offering, magnify it, use it, and glorify your kingdom that is in heaven. All these blessings we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Thank you, Praise Choir. Thank all the musicians and video techs abound. For he is sweet, I know. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let us go now to our scripture lesson for today's message. I believe it's Second Timothy. Second chapter, verses three and four. Reading from the New International Version. Starting with the third verse. It reads, Endure hardship with us like a good soldier. a good soldier of Christ Jesus. 
No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. The word of God for the people of God, as I ask you to join me as my subject is, am I a good soldier? Am I a good soldier? Let us pray. Father, you have lifted us in song and praise. And our hearts are filled with joy. And we just thank you, God, for all that you have done to lift our spirits today. And for that, we are eternally grateful. So, God, we just pray uh, this morning that uh, we have already been lifted in song and praise that now the word will touch our hearts in such a way we not only will be hearers, but doers of your word. And in that way, we give God the glory, we pray. Amen. Am I a good soldier, a good Christian soldier? Amen. Am I a good Christian soldier? In this particular text, the term good soldier, frequent in the language of the holistic mysticism, the Greek mysticism, occurs here only in the New Testament. This military metaphor, however, is common throughout a part of the Episcopal letters written by Paul. Ephesians uh, 6 and 10, when he says, uh, put on the full armor of God to take your stand for the devil's schemes. We know that that's a part of the uh, reading. And I'll go back to that a little later on because that's an excellent scripture. Among people of military prowess, the soldier has always stood as a model of unhesitating obedience, of perfect loyalty, of single-minded and heroic devotion, and of the ultimate of self sacrifice. It is these virtues, virtues which are transferred to the realm of spirit in the phrase, a good soldier of Christ Jesus. The minister is engaged in a perpetual warfare. And like a soldier on duty, he has neither time nor interest for ordinary civilian pursuits. His one aim is to satisfy the one who enlisted him. And the one who enlisted him is Christ Jesus. It must remain a question just how far the writer of this reading meant to push the application of this metaphor. Inevitably, it came to be interpreted in the church as implying not only complete abstinence from secular trades on the part of the clergy, but even from marriage on their part, uh, as stated by Apostle Paul. He had said that he didn't forbear it, but for he himself, uh, he had to remain committed to God because he only knew Christ crucified, so he remained uh, unmarried. That that a strictly professional as over against a lay ministry should have developed within the church is in intelligible enough. But the present text is not concerned about such details. The present text is saying, according to the orthodox belief in church and all that it has done, is that geographically and pointedly, that a minister shall be wholly consecrated to his welfare as a soldier is to his. So the songwriter sort of put it this way. He says, I'm a soldier in the army of God. He said, Jesus is my commanding officer. The Bible is my code of conduct. He says, I am a volunteer in this army and I'm enlisted for eternity. He says, I will either retire 
in this army at the Lord's return or die in this army. But I will not get out, sell out, talked out, pushed out. I'm a soldier <laughs> for Jesus in the army of God. He went on to say, no one has to call me, remind me, write me, visit me, entice me, or lure me. I'm a soldier in the army of God. No one has to send me flowers, gifts, cards, food, candy, or give me any kind of gifts at all. I'm a soldier in the army of God. He went on to say that I cannot have my feelings hurt bad enough to turn me around. I cannot be discouraged enough to turn me aside. I cannot lose enough to cause me to quit. I'm a soldier in the army of God. It says, when Jesus called me into this army, I had nothing. If I end up with nothing, I still came out ahead. He says, I will win because I'm a soldier in the army of God. He's preaching now. He's saying to himself that with God on my side, how can I lose? And I was reminded of that uh, particular uh, reading as I think about in uh, John chapter 10, uh, verse 9, when he says that uh, Jesus is the is the ultimate soldier because he gave up his life, he surrendered his life so we could have life and life everlasting. But because he is a good soldier, because he is a good commanding officer, you have to be willing to be obedient to his call. Because one thing about being in the military, you understand when you sign that document, when you're 18 and 19 years, you don't even read it, but you just sign it. And it says that you are willing to sacrifice your life for this United States of America. You say, say what? I did? You did. And you are on your way. But Jesus is talking about in his army that he is the way in and the way out in his army. Because one thing about sheep, sheep, they follow. Now, if you are, uh, are working around a, 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 a herd of cattle, you know, you have to herd cattle. You got to push them along. You see them old Western cowboys and the guys on their horses, they got their old ropes and they, they herding them on. Well, if, now if you're a cow, you got to be herded. <laughs> but a sheep is going to follow. Now, you'll notice you've seen the, the shepherd going along and they got the bell on there. And, and wherever the shepherd go, the sheep will follow. The text says because they know his voice. And it says they won't recognize somebody's voice who is, is not a true shepherd. He said because the, the false shepherd, he got to jump over the pen and jump into the pen. And he comes in like a, a thief in the night. But he said a true shepherd is going to stay with the sheep through thick and thin. He said if the lion protect him on the left, he'll get to the left. If the wolf protect him on the right, he'll protect him. That's what a good shepherd does. And Jesus says in the text, he says, I am a good shepherd. That's what he said. I am a good shepherd. And so there's a difference between a good shepherd and a false shepherd because a false shepherd, when the, when the heat get too hot, he going to take off. He going to take off. So like a sheep that's following this commanding officer, we are, if we believe in Christ Jesus, we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and then we confess and then we join the Christian band, then that means we're going to follow Jesus. But just for a second, in John 10, verse 9, he talks about that Jesus is the way in and the, and the way out. And you really can't join the Christian band. You can't be a, a follower unless you come in to Jesus and then you go out and do his bidding. So it reminds us today, but the text talks about, even in Ephesians 6 and 10, when it says, put on the full armor of God so that when you take your stand, you can stand against the schemes of the devil. 
That's what he said, the devil's schemes. Now, the devil got some schemes that you can't handle on your own. And God has already set up is that you can't get out of the devil's scheme until you come to the one who is over the devil. I preached about that last Sunday. I said the, 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 the Lord said that who, who was going to take you out, devil? He said Jesus was going to take you out. He said, well, show me this Jesus. And, the, and in the text it says that the God showed uh, uh, the devil who Jesus was and who he was coming, and the devil fell face down because he knew he had no power over God. So the text says the devil's schemes that trap us today uh, something is that we just really can't overcome. When you think about it, today we struggle with what they call syndromes and hang-ups and trick bags, as well as all kinds of emotional distress that go by fancy psychiatric names like neurosis and psychosis. In a day when people in increasing numbers are crying out, we see them on uh, the internet now. In the old days, you couldn't see that, you know. But now people put their troubles online. And then people take advantage of them <laughs> and talk about them. And they're in worse shape than they were uh, before. But today, as I said, people are crying out, how did I get into this? And how do I get out? I'm lonely, frustrated, and tired. I'm slipping downhill. I'm hurting mentally and emotionally. I need help, I need relief, I need space. I need fresh air. I need to cut loose, I worn out. How can I escape? Now there are various ways of solving uh, problems of escaping, of getting out, or trying to find an exit. The answer, the answer are being offered by a variety of sects and cults. You can go all the way from uh, Scientology until Zen, Buddha, and others. But getting out, escaping, is only half of the solution. If you find your way out of a life's dissatisfaction, but fail to find satisfaction, you are worse off than before. Getting out is not enough. The writer talks about in his uh, previous job, he was a hospital orderly. And it was uh, often his duty to tell patients when they were being discharged. And he goes on to say, more than once, he said, I would be greeted not with a big smile, but with an ex expression of dread. They would say to him, my home is so messed up. I almost rather stay here. That's what he said. I almost rather stay here. And they were reminded way back in the times when we were enslaved and it was abolished. And the government promised uh, 40 acres and a mule. You remember that? But the promise was broken as so many promises have been broken. However, uh, the ex uh, and the, the ex-slaves who had been enslaved, many of them wanted to even go back to the master's plantation because the promise had been broken. No, getting out of a bad situation is not enough. And this is where Jesus comes in. The master refers to himself by some interesting and powerful titles. He's called the Son of God, the Good Shepherd, and the True Vine. As we said in John 10 and 9, he says, I am the door. A door has some interesting characteristics. It serves two purposes at the same time. It takes you out and in at the same time. A door takes you out of one room and into another out of one environment and into another, out of one experience and into another. When you move about your home, you don't go out of one door into another. You go from the kitchen uh, to the den. And even if you have, even if you leave home, you must use the door 
to go from the inside to the outside. In other words, a door is something you go through. Jesus says, I am the door. He is saying, come through me, and you will walk out of darkness into light. This is the Christ Jesus solution, the Jesus dimension, or the Jesus response to the mess of life. The problem of a troubled life has two parts. This Jesus is the way out and the way in. Now, the other doors you can use in trying to deal with a bad life situation. Some use the drug door. Some use the tranquilizing door. Others use the, the, the alcohol door, trying to drink themselves out. Some use the political power door, trying to influence their way out. Others use the money door, trying to buy themselves out. Some use the, the party door, trying to good time themselves out. All of these can get you out, but what you get into may be worse. Christ Jesus talks about uh, being a good soldier and following God's will. He's trying to tell you that if you're going to be a part of my army in the army of God and you need to find relief, he says, I am the door. He says, I have great respect for other religions, you know, for, from Islam and, and to uh, 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 Muhammad. But he says, he says but I, I agree with Peter who said, there is no other name given under heaven whereby we are to be saved. Paul put it this way. God has highly exalted him and given him the name above every name. That all the name, uh, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that he is the Lord. Or, he says, take the words of W.C. Martin when he said, the name of Jesus is so sweet. I love its music to repeat. It makes me joyful and complete. The, the precious name of Jesus. I said, oh, oh, Jesus said, oh, how sweet the name. Jesus every day the same. Jesus let all saints proclaim is worthy praise forever. An open door in prison can't free anyone unless they walk through it. Some hesitate to take the Jesus door. With some people, it is only after they have tried every other door and everything else, and desperation sets in. Then they, they, they try, they try the Jesus door. And you remember the thief uh, uh, on the cross was desperate. When he cried, Lord, remember me. He was looking for a way out and a way in. He wanted to escape the guilt of his crimes and the pains of the crucifixion. But he also wanted interest, an entrance into Christ's kingdom. Jesus, in forgiving the criminal and promising him admission to the kingdom, used himself as the door of a shattered life and into a place of priest. So we say that with Christ Jesus, the door is always open. It's not hidden. He is no illusion. Anytime and in every condition, he's available. A walk through the, walk through the Jesus door will bring peace and joy. A walk through the Jesus door will find you a way into life. He is the way out of sadness and into the way of gladness. Then it says he is the way out of despair and into hope. He's the way out of selfishness into service. He's a good soldier. He says he's the way out of midnight and into a, a sunlight. He's a, a good soldier. He says he is the way out of a shipwreck and into a, a safe harbor. Oh, Jesus, he is a mighty, mighty, mighty a, a, a soldier. It says, 
All you have to do is walk through the door. Don't stay locked out. Don't stay hurt in confusion. Don't stay hurt in helplessness. Don't stay hurt in strife. Say all along. Say all along what William Seifler said in the hymn writer. He said, out of my bondage, out of sorrow and night, Jesus, I come, I come, I come. Into thy freedom, gladness and night, Jesus, I come to thee. Out of my sickness and into health, out of my want and into wealth, out of my sin and into thyself, Jesus, I come out of my shameful failure and loss. Jesus, I come into the grain, into the gain of the righteous cross. Jesus, I come out of earth's sorrows into thy balm, out of life's storms into thy calm, out of distress into a jubilant song. Jesus, I come. So I said to him, am I a good soldier? Am I a good soldier? I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm in a so I am a soldier of the cross. I am a soldier of Christ Jesus. I'm going to stay with him. I'm going to walk with him. I'm going to cry with him, pray with him, hold on to him. I'm in it for the long haul. Jesus, I am a soldier on the cross. So I know I'm in, so I'm asking, are you in? Are you a soldier of the cross? So he says that if you are, if you are, if you are a soldier of the cross and you want to be good and do good with Jesus, he says that time is fleeing by and nobody is promised another day. So you better make hay while the sun is still shining. Make hay while there's an opportunity to do good in your very life. And God has made it plain to me and to you. He said, what you, you're going to have to do, and I'm going to be wrapping it up right now. He said, what you have to do, we talked about, he said, you got to put on the full armor of God to take your stand against the devil's scream. He said, for our struggle is not against the flesh and the blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm. Stand firm then with the, with the belt of truth around your waist and with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted for readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all that, take up the shield of faith with which, with which, 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 which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions, all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep praying for all the saints. Oh, that's it. That's it, saints. You get, that's it. Put on that full army of God. And then you'll be able to say, I am a soldier in God's army. We pray, amen, amen, and amen. At this time, we extend the invitation to one that may be out there and it's going through some troubled times, some dark times. We ask you now to come up, sign up to be in the army of God, and write your name on the heavenly scroll. Oh, we ask you to come now. Andre, can you do me a favor? Uh, on that, uh, just sing, uh, lift your hands in the sanctuary for our invitational song. If we lift our hands, maybe somebody will join. 
Thank the Lord for another day in the land of the living. Thank God for the Priscilla Hawkins Women's Missionary Society. Praise them for all that they've done today and to brighten up our sanctuary and our service. Thank you, Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood to make us a kingdom and priest and to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever as all God's children sing together. Amen. 